If your art had a go-to outfit, what would it be? It would be something very practical, mm -hmm. something a little bit sun smart, so with a collar. Ooh, with a touch of flair. A touch of flair. <laughs> Maybe like a little cravat with a little... Trading with some Raz. Razzy trade, zingy tradey. I love it. Yeah, my art is a zingy tradey. <laughs> notice your art? Probably just before I went to art school I think I'd just gotten to this point I had studied photography at school but left school quite early like in year 10 and then traveled for a few years and then I think it was about maybe must have been like 2000 or 99 or something where I started I love photography so I was documenting things but that this idea of it sort of tipping over from documentation of the world around me and a photojournalism um, streak yep. that I think I naturally have um, moved into something a little bit more visually um, like searching for visual uh, satisfaction I think probably yeah so I must have been maybe late teens or early 20s or something like that. Yeah. I can't really remember. Yeah, but around yeah. that kind of yeah. late yeah. teens, early 20s. Yeah, it wasn't something I was into as a kid yeah. or anything, but definitely around that time. And was it a slow burn or was it quite hot and fast? It was slow burn because I think partly in those times it was film photography which is a slow burn yes it <laughs> is nothing hot and fast about yes. film yeah and i think also just slowly looking for things but not really thinking anything of it because i think everybody probably has a camera at some point enjoys using the camera and you know i don't think i was different to anyone in that sense i was just sort of exploring things visually uh, like everyone else but i think once i started shooting it's like every time i was shooting something to document something so i was working um photographing stuff on blockades and protests and um very deep in the environmental movement but then of course from that point it was like i started moving like my it just tan tangent tangenting i was tangentling <laughs> i was gently tangenting um into abstraction, which I think is also a very natural, you know, looking for ways of the, you know, what, what's ordinary around us and finding ways to make it seem like it's otherworldly. And I think that probably slowly unfolded over many years. How long were you dating for, do you think, roughly, before you kind of committed to an art practice per se? I would say that the commitment level was very high very quickly because I went straight into studying fine art and um, studying photography. And I was really inspired by um, a photographer called Ricky Maynard in Tasmania who came actually when I was studying Aboriginal studies and um, he was probably the most inspired and you know he had come into my life via another through Aboriginal studies not through photography but he's a photographer um, and I think I sort of started thinking more about I guess in that way of like because I'd been going to art school, I'm like, okay, this is how it all is, but I'm re I've still got this sort of, I'm constantly moving between this sort of documentation and reality and the other, this idea of things feeling like they're from somewhere else, that they're everywhere and nowhere. Um, so what was the question, whether it was sort of... Like how long were you kind of dating for before yeah, you and I, committed? Yeah, so I would say I had like a really solid... Um, 10 years yep. where I absolutely put my foot down on studying and shooting and exhibiting. And then my practice, I mean, I feel like this conversation is also happening at a funny time because I've had this almost decade long hiatus from exhibiting. Mm. So it's actually been a really nice way to think about it like a relationship because um, 
now I feel like I'm a more mature person. Yeah. So I'm sort of meeting, it's like I'm having, it's like we've had a big long break. Um, and during that time I was, um, you know, working as a photographer mm. full time, more than full time, just all the time. All the time. Just all the time. 24-7. <laughs> all the fools, all the times. And that has been amazing and I feel really, um, you know, I'm obviously very lucky to have been able to build a career and, you know, support my family and have an amazing life as a photographer of visual art. So I'm like deep in the visual arts sector, but that step outside working as a photographer. And I've only recently, after a sabbatical last year, just dived headfirst again oh. into this space, but it yeah. feels so different to how it felt you know, my last couple of shows over 2010, 11, 12, I was so, um, I gave so much of a shit about how it would be received. And I was so desperately hoping like people, that people would understand it in a certain way and that they would like, I just had so much more angst connected to it. Yeah. And um, now I'm like, here it is. It's pretty weird. It's probably a bit niche. I don't know if anyone, you know, some people are they going to get it? They're not going to get it. But I've got this real grain of salt maturity wow. now that has obviously developed. A, because I'm technically more skilled than I was 10 years ago. And it's just a sort of different, I think it's also just an age thing, like my, my level of confidence and my, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is it. Like, I don't feel, yeah, so that's been really interesting to reapproach. And having recently had this show, I think that has brought that into such stark mm. contrast. I've, I've got a sort of, it's like a bit of separation between, like, I don't really mind how it's received. You know, it's not for everyone. Yep. Like some people are just going to look at it and go, it's fucking weird. <laughs> What's the point of that? And I'll be like, yeah. I mean, what is the point? <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so that's been probably like... So you're hidden, just coming yeah. back to it now. Yeah, Whoa. yeah. So it's like all, it feels so fresh, so new, but it also feels like I have all of this. It's like the underground river has been running the whole time because I've been producing the work the whole time, but not exhibiting. Mm -hmm. And now it just feels like it's come, you know, it's now on the surface and it's a river running you know, somewhere. Yeah, wow. To some ocean or something. Interesting. Okay, so I feel like you've come back and you're now more wholly committed to the art side of your yeah. practice. Yeah, yep, yep. Do you have to give anything up in order to commit to that? Like, is there another part of your life that has to kind of quieten down because this relationship yeah. is now back in the yeah. fold? Absolutely. And that is my commercial practice working for other arts organisations and for other okay. artists. And I know for a lot of people, you know, they talk about teaching and doing their own art practice, for example, and talk about it being, you know, drawing from the same well and, you know, I don't know whether that is necessarily 100% true for me because I feel like I can do, I can do, have a commercial practice and be doing my own work. But I think what I have been, what I've given up is being so busy and so flat tack with working for other organisations and other visual artists that I didn't, ha I just didn't have any space. So it's one of those things with art practices, if it's not your main gig, if it's something you do in your spare time, like I don't have any spare, like, yeah. you know, spare time's not a thing. It's, I don't even understand where we got this idea of time being spare. But if it's important, we make time for things. And now I think I'm also lucky because I've been, you know, able to work for quite a few years and, you know, financially be at a point where I can actually, you know, have a lot more space where I'm not earning so much money and can dig into my art practice in a way that I just wouldn't have been able to in the last 10 years. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's probably what I've given up, but it's not, it does not feel like a sacrifice. Yeah. At all. Well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, that's I did. Good. Yeah. And it feels like I'm, I mean, I guess I'm, there's some ego for me connected with my, 
um, commercial work because it's a lot of like, you know, publications mm. and it's, a, yeah, there's a lot of that. So I've given up that in a sense. Yeah but it didn't feel that hard, to be honest. Yeah. Did you fall out of love with your art in those 10 years? Like, have you ever fallen out of love or was it just, you just, you still loved it, but you ignored it? I ignored it, okay. but I also had other, you know, I have a family and, you know, we were just, my husband and I both finished studying. We had three children over the time of um, us both studying degrees. So we were broke yeah. all the time and, <laughs> You know, and just, you know, we didn't live that uni life. Like we were like babies, toddlers, all the things, working part time, all the stuff. Um, so in terms of falling out of love, I don't think that is the case in a sense. It's more just that I've had to put it aside um, for a time. Yeah. And actually when my kids were little, I did still, I was still having shows. Um, but I also think that there was a point where I think I had, um, my last solo show in 2011 and I had I broke even financially from it and I was like oh, I was like winning I've made it <laughs> but I looked around at my family you know and they were all just like you know I got a couple of kids sprawled on the floor and my husband is just half dead from installing the show and I've been so busy and I've just you know and I just thought actually this is not worth it and yeah and also having worked I guess in the back end of the visual arts in the bowels let's call it of the visual arts industry I also know how fickle it is yeah. and whether you're doing good work or not doing good work that doesn't mean you're going to be collected or not collected it's you know it's it can be as fickle as fashion and all the other industries you know of the world so I'm also I think having all of that experience I can take it with a grain of salt and I don't feel um, yeah I don't feel like falling out of love like just feels more it's just like a priority for yeah you. and I was super happy to let it go and yeah. I actually just I consciously said I'm not an artist like I had a conversation with this artist um, Brian McKay who's a painter in Western Australia and I, photogra I was photographing his work right up until he passed away and um, we would have all sorts of conversations in his studio and he said that he'd brought someone over when they started the Perth Institute of Contemporary Art and of which he was a part of that and they would brought someone over to give this talk and the guy had said to the, all of these young arts artists and art students and said if you can think of anything that you would like to be other than an artist do it if you can't and there is no other pathway for you be an artist but if there is any other pathway take the other pathway so this person said this guy Brian said that in sitting there he, he knew in that moment there was no other pathway for him and when I had this conversation with Brian which would have been 50 you know years later I was like, oh, I, should, I can actually think of heaps of other stuff I want to do. And um, I said, maybe I'll just give up on being an artist. And he was like, oh no, that's not what I, <laughs> that's not what, how this conversation was going to go. I was like, no, I feel really good about it. I feel really free. I feel good. Like, I feel like it's been a weight trying to be acknowledged by mm. the right people. And you know, mm. it just felt like such a struggle. Mm. And now I'm free. And now I can do whatever I want. Yeah. And I felt really good about it. And I think in a lot of ways in the last 10 years, the work that I've been creating because I've been completely not needing to exhibit, yep. not needing to have any sort of acknowledgement or fit into any grants or find a way to make things happen. I've just been able to do whatever I want. And it has evolved like this visual language that I've been building these strands have just been getting strong and they're all just starting to, you know, it felt like they're almost plashing together, all these things I'm always looking for. And now it feels like, as I'm saying, like this river that's come up above ground, Yeah. it feels like it's like, it's strong now. Yeah. And it all happened like under the ground. The, yeah. Yeah, so that's been really interesting to reflect on. Wow. Yeah, since, you know, this idea of this conversation. Yeah. So I guess it, it doesn't, the next question was, have you ever, cheated on your art with another practice or with anything else. I feel like 
No, you just... Yeah, it's been really consistent. Yeah. Um, I, the only thing I would say about that is that maybe I... I don't think I have any other skills because I've got strong photography technical skills. I feel like that's, you know, such a pathway, but I do feel like occasionally diverting from that pathway, but- um, With what? It, just, well, so I have in, um, in printmaking yeah. and in sculpture, I studied sculpture and in, yeah, so basically in other mediums, that, that feels like, but it all leads back to this, it always leads back to photography. So yeah. they're all just, they're, what do they call it? Dalliance. Dalliance. Yeah, they're all just... Dalliance. <laughs> um, how, how do you, you woo your art to get back in the good books now, like in this last little period? I wouldn't say I wooed it. I would say I was wooed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I were wooed. The, the lady likes yeah, to be wooed. I How wooed. did it woo you? <laughs> it wooed me because it feels like it's just, it's been knocking, knocking, yeah. knocking, 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 knocking. And I've been ignore, 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 ignore. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if I wooed it. So I don't have any, you know, helpful snippets for that. But I yeah. do think that it's, it's a compulsion and it's mm. my work has a formality to it it's a it's a way of organizing distilling and simplifying the world uh, around us and um, and that is an like a sort of you know like the motor for that is just always churning so I think every time I'm going you know I'm just soaking in visual you know, I'm just looking all the time for this language, for these threads. And um, yeah, I don't know if there's a way of, I think in some ways the most freeing thing has really been the no outcomes factor. Yeah. And, and not having any, not having any um, weight to whether or not it's successful in the world. I think that has been probably the biggest, you know, letting go that has created the most amount of momentum for me. One last question. Yeah. What's your tip for keeping the, the friendship or the relationship alive? Or is that to be advised given that you're kind of embarking back yeah, on this Yeah, I mean, new... I think it's a, it's a compulsion. Yeah. But also, like I was saying before about this idea of spare time or when you're going to do things, and I think there's like a million productivity experts and people who will tell you, like, here's the way to do this and here's the way to do that. And I honestly think that it is mostly bullshit, but I honestly would also say if you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you don't prioritise it and make time for it, it's not a priority for you. Like, that's the reality of things. It's like people say, oh, but I don't have time for this and I don't have time for that. It's like, you know, as though there's some, someone else is, you know, I think there's a level of agency and the other thing, having not just myself, but certainly working with so many artists over the years, they work so fucking hard. Yeah. That is the number one thing that they will always say. It's like, you're just constantly showing up. You're just constantly doing, you're failing all the time. Yeah. And you keep going. You, you know, there's no quick fix, there's no easy answer, there's no, you know, make it snappy, now you win, you know? It's like, it's oh just God. so boring. It's a, it reminds me a little bit of like, being in a healthy relationship with yourself and with others, it's so boring, the things you have to do, it's like, you have to drink water, you have to exercise every day, you have to fucking meditate for 10 minutes, you have to eat fruits and vegetables, it's like, you know, it's so boring. Yeah. You have to go to bed early and poke on your phone in bed. You know, it's like, these are the things, this is also how yeah. to have a relationship yeah. with a person. Yeah. And it's also how to have a relationship with your art practice. It's like, it is the, the bedrock of it all is yeah. just so boring. Yeah. And, um, and it's just that daily stuff of life, you know, no yeah. quick fix. Oh my goodness, Bo Wong. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Pleasure, thank you so much, Willie. <laughs>